talking outside, high intensity working out. Anne founded High Intensity Training Australia. Yes, yes. Uh, so the thing with this is the convention uh, turned me on to a whole different way of life. Uh, sometimes I train in that way, sometimes I don't. You know, sometimes I can take it a little bit easy on myself, but the diet, the uh, fitness, the different weightlifting, the different information that I've heard through this convention, specifically, um, he's, he's a friend of Doug McGuff's, Dr. Doug McGuff, one of the best speeches I've ever seen at the convention. Uh, also, Drew Bay, who was one of the original guys talking about high intensity training. And I, I ended up, uh, you know, training in those ways and training a whole bunch of different ways, became stronger than I've ever been and laid off a little bit lately. But uh, some interesting stuff. You're going to go over the history of it, yep. all the different dynamics of it. Yep. We're, we're excited to hear about it. It's the last speech of the day. You know, put your thinking caps on, all that fun stuff, and uh, take it away, my man. Yep. Right. Okay, go, guys. Look, um, I just when I was asked to do the presentation, and probably just with Anthony and that, um, I started corresponding on different websites from America, the Body by Science website, Drew Bay's website, and um, Anthony start, started to appear on there as well, and we were sort of m making little different sort of chats with each other, and so I sort of got into this um, thing of, um, then, then eventually he said, oh, I'm coming to Australia to do the 21 convention, and I said, well, I live in Australia, I live in Sydney, and um, if you want to have someone to talk a bit about high-intensity training, I, I sort of put my hand up and said I would. Basically, um, I, I sort of thought with, I teach fitness classes and courses and I'm thinking, well, what am I going to sort of go with you guys? People might not do much fitness, people might do a lot. Where, where do you fit in with it? So I sort of thought I'd sort of start with a little bit of a history of sort of exercise or a bit of a history of the fitness industry in Australia, a little bit about myself. And then I'll sort of move into a bit of the sort of history of high intensity training, which is probably one of those things that um, I suppose when you get right into it, you sort of become a bit of a historian. You start to like to hear about the guys from the old days and things like that. And probably that's why I sort of give you those handouts with some of the old sort of um, bodybuilders from the 70s and 80s and that sort of thing. And those guys that all trained high intensity when it first started. So I thought I'd just start there. Um, Hopefully, you know, what is hit, you know, does it mean much to you or doesn't it? Hopefully by the end of um, my, my presentation that some of you guys might start looking at high intensity training and at least understand what it means and as opposed to maybe some other different types of training and how it is different to other styles of training that um, people might do. So that's what I'm, my, my aim is to achieve that. Hopefully I can. Um, I'll go through the presentation a little bit. Probably save questions to the end, if that's all right, a little bit. Um, again, hopefully that I can sort of keep you um, sort of not getting too in-depth, because that was the other thing I was sort of thinking, if I make it too technical, and you might sort of not, un, you, know, you know, you sort of might lose track of that a little bit. So plenty of questions at the end. Um, I sort of, that's where I hopefully I will we'll end up with a lot of it yourself. So if I just sort of start the presentation and say, my name's Stephen Turner, so just again, so if anyone sort of forgets from that, and... I'll start from there and we'll work our way through and I'll sort of sort of get you to understand that sort of whole the whole high intensity sort of training sort of process, what it's all about. Okay. Um, just a brief history of the industry, and I'm only going back here a little bit. The brief history I'm talking a bit about is my own sort of history a little bit to where I started, just like you guys are now. Going to the gym where it all started, what was it like in them days, you know what I mean, as young fellas like yourselves, that's what I was sort of probably looking at a little bit, you know what I mean, so I thought, well, I could go back, you know, fitness has been there thousands and thousands of years, it's our exercise, but just how it's generally developed a little bit over the last sort of 40 odd years or so, and probably the experiences I, I, I experienced as well, going to the gym for the first time, what it was all about, and a little bit of differences and how that sort of, sort of pale on, so just 1960s and 70s, um, bodybuilding only gyms, does that sort of make any sense to anybody, bodybuilding only gyms? Look, in those days the gyms were sort of a bit more the old YMCA, police citizens and youth club, um, sort of plates only, weights all over the floor, all that sort of thing, dingy sort of rooms for a lot of stuff, you know what I mean? 
guys would go in, they'd have the windows all closed and stuff, and we'd be all in there sweating and, and you know, sort of lifting weights. So, in, in, in the sense then that um, that's really what the gyms were about in the 60s and 70s. Have we got that far? Um, I don't know, again, this is where I come sort of a bit more into it, the 70s, 80s, the aerobics boom. Does anybody sort of what I mean by the aerobics boom? The Jane Fonda, the Olivia Newton-Johns, um, we all wore, they wore leotards, we all jumped up on the stage and, you know, done exercise to music. It, it was the first sort of movement where we also started having women, women in the gyms. So we sort of moved from just males, mainly, mostly, and now we've got women coming to the gyms. So the guys and that are a bit smart, what would they do? They turn up to the aerobics class and do the aerobics class with the Jane Fonda leotard, guys with the, guys, uh, girls with the Jane Fonda leotard, et cetera, et cetera. So you sort of went and done those classes mainly to sort of see, get in interaction with the girls and things like that. Um, sort of moving through to the 80s and 90s, we sort of looked at the cardio equipment and various group exercises classes started coming about. So now instead of you going out maybe running, for example, the gyms would have a cardio, what we call a cardio section, where they'd have treadmills and bikes, etc., etc. They'd have group exercise rooms, and then we would move into sort of um, different group exercise classes, such as um, Les Mills pump and those types of things. So those pump classes were sort of made for women to lift weights to a bit of music. That, that, that's the Les Mills sort of aim was. And, you know, we, we sort of also had guys in there as well. But that, and, and, and this is one thing I point out with a lot of people, that for a lot of women when they pointed out is actually some of those pump classes and stuff probably just more waste of time, you know what I mean? Because there's not a lot of gains and stuff in it. But that was another movement, another movement in the fitness industry, another big major shift as we went through into the 80s and 90s. Sort of going now in the 80s, 90s, and I'm not sure if anybody of you guys has any experience this, the personal training boom started coming along. The fitness first, cl club started opening, and everyone was doing personal training sessions. It sort of moved from, now you had your, the thing when the rich person sort of went to his dinner, oh, I've got my personal trainer. So, you know, I've got my personal trainer. Oh, my personal trainer does this, my personal trainer does that sort of thing. So... You, you, you weren't in the in crowd unless you had a personal trainer in that that, that sort of, especially in those sort of 90s. Um, and a lot of the health clubs offered them, but, you know, you had to pay for them as well. So, <laughs> um, Now to the present, sort of like to, this, to today, um, which is sort of called the anything goes type stuff. There's PT, boxing, tyre throwing, kettlebells. There's a whole sort of different sort of, if you ever go to the gyms, you'll see it all happening or your personal trainers, there's all these different types of training methods. All people trying to sort of get results and things like that with training. So we've sort of progressed through the 60s with the um, old style gyms, basically owned by a, the, the bodybuilder or experience or the guy or the guy, the owner would own the gyms, one man sort of gyms and stuff like that. Um, and then we sort of had the functional movement. If I just move back now to a fitness accreditation, because as a teacher myself, I involve in accrediting people uh, for the certificate three and four of fitness, or people to work in the fitness industry. So, going back to the 60s and 70s, most of the gyms, the owners were the gyms were run by either the owner or you know a couple of other guys in the gym. That was basically it. You know, what I mean, You'd, they would operate through years and years of experience. Those guys had all these years and years of just getting in there, doing doing the weights, you know what I mean? They sort of, what you weren't really university trained at that point, you know what I mean? Those guys just done it from, for the love of it, I suppose, if you want to put it that way. Um, through the 70s and that, and just don't want to show my age too much and things like that, but in about 1978, we had, or in the mid-70s, they introduced fitness leaders as into gyms and stuff as well. So. We sort of moved into this now, um, having people working as gym instructors and group exercise people and, and that, that sort of thing. So courses were just two days. 
start to work in a gym, you know what I mean? That was sort of in the, in the sort of mid-70s. and most of, the, most of that was aimed at the aerobics, group exercise classes, you know what I mean, that type of thing. Um, just moving the 80s, the fitness leaders, that sort of started to develop a little bit more from, you know, there, there was more injuries were occurring to people, people were getting injured, all these high impact activities, people, you know, from jumping in that all the time. It, it was just so the courses started to grow and develop. We sort of moved from one to owner, one two day course, one or two day courses, now having a course over a uh, couple of weeks. And now we're sort of in the 90s now, we have Certificate 3 Fitness and Certificate 4 Personal Trainers. And they, they vary of different, um, var variation of different length of time to do those courses and stuff like that to become a, to work in the fitness industry. Everyone happy enough with that part? Okay, so just, hope, just trying to give you a little bit of broad range on the history of the industry. Um, just my, my own experience, instead of just sort of, oh, I can just sort of go back a little bit for you. 